years. And I thank pastor and all the leadership of the church. And uh, my elder brother, Amusa, for asking me to come this morning. If you have your Bibles with you, can you please turn to Psalm 102? And let's read the first 13 verses. Psalm 102. Verses 1 through 13. Let's hear God's word. It's a prayer of the afflicted when he is overwhelmed and pours out his complaint before the Lord. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come to you. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my trouble. Incline your ear to me, and the day that I call, answer me speedily. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned like a heath. My heart is stricken and with it like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. Because of the sound of my groaning, my bones cling to my skin. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. I lie awake and I am like a sparrow alone on the housetop. My enemies reproach me all day long. Those who deride me swear an oath against me. For I have eaten ashes like bread and mingled my drink with weeping. Because of your indignation and your wrath, for you have lifted me up and cast me away. My days are like a shadow that lengthens, and I wither away like grass. But you, O Lord, shall endure forever, in the remembrance of your name to all generations. Note verse 13, which will be our theme for this morning. You will arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her, yes, the set time has come. Amen. Amen. Like we looked at the introduction of the psalm, is a psalm of prayer by the afflicted person whose whole life is overwhelmed and consumed with pain. And this individual pours out his complaint before the Lord. In spite of the affliction that he goes through, he still has solid faith, trust, and confidence in God. This morning, whatever situation you find yourself in, whatever seems to cripple your vision, have this realization that God loves you. God cares for you. And he is a present help in time of need. If you have time and you want to do a closer study of Psalm 102, let me just give you some analysis quickly. In verses 1 to 2 is the plea and prayer of the afflicted person. His plea and prayer to God. Hear my prayer, let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me. Incline your ear to me. Answer me speedily when I call. May God answer somebody this morning. Amen. May it be an answer that responds to your heart cry. Amen. That Jesus can be glorified. In verses 3 to 11, it talks about the precious 
and the pain of the afflicted person. The precious and the pain of the afflicted. His days were consumed like smoke. His bones burned like heath. His heart was stricken. In fact, he even forgot to eat his bread. And as a result of his groaning, his bones were clinging to his skin. His situation was compelled to the pelican, the owl, and the sparrow. As a pelican and as an owl in the desert, in the wilderness, there was dryness. And as a sparrow on the housetop, he was lonely. Then from verse 12 to 17, he looks at the perfect and proper timing of God. The perfect and what? The proper timing of God. He talks about the enduring and remembrance of God's name. The set time to favor the afflicted has come. The set time to build up the afflicted has come. The set time to regard the affliction and the prayer of the afflicted has come. And the set time for the servants of God to take pleasure in him has come. Above all, the set time to reverence God has come. Hallelujah. And so this morning I want to emphasize on the subject, the set time has come. The set time has what? Has come. Time is very crucial to man's existence. There are people that are wasting their God-given time. There are churches that are wasting their God-given time. But there are others who are so passionately serving God. And trusting that through their lives and through the shed blood of the, the blood of Jesus on the cross, God can depend on them to bring souls into glory. Hallelujah. In the Bible, when it talks about the set time, there is a definition. In Genesis 18, verses 13 to 14, it is called the appointed time. The appointed what? Time. In Genesis 21 verses 1 and 2, it is called the set time. Psalm 102, which we just read, verse 13, it is defined as the favorable time. The time when God favors you and favors me. Hallelujah. In Psalm 102 and uh, verse 13 again, it is the time promised. You see, when you are walking with God, there are many promises he unveils unto you. And there comes a time when there is the actualization of the promise. And this morning, the set time has come for someone. In Psalm 75 and verse 2, it is called the proper time chosen by God. Which means there are certain times that man chooses. But it's in contradiction with the divine time. God works with a divine calendar. And because he's a God who so much works with his time. Don't force him into areas that he's not designed for you. Amen. Amen. The set time has come. Psalm 119, verse 126. The Bible defines the set time as the action time. The time to act has come. Hallelujah. There are some of us in this building and some of you who are hearing us either through the internet. That if God does not rise up to act within the next 24 hours. Only heaven knows where your faith will be. And so the set time has come for the spirit of God, the power of Jesus Christ to be released and to act on your behalf and on my behalf. To act on behalf of the church. To act on behalf of the families we come from. 
that others around us through our relationship and fellowship and friendship with God will get to know the beauty and the glory of Christ. The time to act has come. But then in conclusion in Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4. He's talking about Jesus whom in the next few days the whole world will be at attention celebrating his birth. It's called the fullness of the time. Hallelujah. He says when the fullness of time was come. God visited Mary. And she conceived Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the NIV Bible, Galatians 4, verse 4 says, the set time. The New King James says, the fullness of time. The New Living Translation says, the right time. Say right time. We simply give you shades of meanings for you to understand when the psalmist in his affliction declares that the set time has come for God to favor him. He knew what he was talking about. Hallelujah. The right time. In fact, in the International Standard Version, it is called the appropriate time. Hallelujah. The appropriate time has come for Jesus Christ by the authority of the Holy Ghost to elevate somebody here. To bring somebody here to a life of total commitment to God and the purpose of heaven. The time of completion has come. So now let's consider the set time has come. Amen. I said what has come. In the first place, the set time has come for somebody in this building today to experience divine communication. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, the Bible talks of the fact that and the Lord spoke to Abraham. You go to Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 17, and it says, after Lot has departed from Abraham, the Lord spoke to Abraham. In Genesis 15 and verse 1, the Bible says the Lord appeared and spoke to Abraham. Genesis 17, verse 1 to 2, and the Lord spoke to Abraham. In Genesis 21, verse 12 to 13, and the Lord spoke to Abraham. Now all that these verses are communicating is that when you're going to walk with God, you must come to a place when heaven communicates with you. We live in times when people are in church, but they have no divine communication. The set time has come for somebody to get out of carnal issues of life. And position yourself in a place where the spirit of God can speak. Thus says the Lord to you. Many of us are depending on second hand and third hand information. But the time has come for you to personally encounter God. And hear the voice of the Lord. In the days of all the prophets it will say. Thus says the Lord. When was the last time God spoke to you? I'm not talking about hearing sermons. I'm not talking about sitting about a message and you enjoy it. I'm talking about divine communication. God reaching out into your spirit and speaking specific things about your life, about ministry, and about your family and the future. The Lord spoke. If you go home, read Numbers, the book of Numbers, 36 chapters. 65 times the statement says, and the Lord spoke to Moses. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Sometimes he spoke to Moses in the wilderness. Other times he spoke to Moses in the sanctuary. 
There were times he spoke to Moses on the mountain top. In some places he spoke to him in the valley. All that God is saying is this. Whether you are in the wilderness, whether you are in the valley, whether you are on the mountain top, God speaks. And the set time has come for somebody here today to experience divine communication. You cannot walk with God and enjoy your friendship with him without God communicating to you. What has God said to you about your, your future partner? What has God spoken to you about your future ministry? What has God spoken to you about your family uh, readjustments? What has God spoken to you? The set time has come for divine communication. Hallelujah. Number two. This will be a kind of Bible study thing for you this morning. In Genesis 21 and verse number 1 to 3. The Bible declares that. At the set time that the Lord has spoken. He visited Sarah. The set time has come. For somebody in the building today to experience divine visitation. Sarah has been barren for over 25 years in marriage. And God comes and speaks prophetically. Through your seed, I'm going to bless the nations of the world. Human as they were. They stumbled along the line. But when he speaks, he watches over his word to perform it. It may take years, but God will come through with you. Are you with me? There's somebody here that God has spoken some words of comfort and challenge to you. But it seems the words are delaying. But take some encouragement from Sarah and Abraham that the set time has come for divine visitation. When Joseph was about to die in Genesis chapter 50, his brothers were around him and he said to them, I am about to die. But I am convinced that surely the Lord will visit you. Amen. Amen. Joseph believed in divine visitation. May God visit you. Amen. May the things that have been prophesied over your life. By the authority of the Holy Spirit. Come to pass. There is divine visitation. But the sad thing is that there are many people when God visits, they don't see. Jacob had an encounter. He gets up in the morning and he said, the Lord was actually around and I did not know. See, if you have your own preconceived ideas as to how God should visit you, you will miss him. There was a day when one prophet by name Elijah had become so desperate with life, he even wanted to die. And God found him by a cave. And as they had some conversation, God wanted to show himself strong. The Bible says there was a mighty earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. There was a mighty fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. There was a strong wind. But God was not in the wind. But see throughout Elijah's life. He's used to God manifesting himself in fire. On Mount Carmel. He's used to God manifesting himself in earthquakes. He's used to God manifesting himself in the winds. But he has to be trained by the spirit of God to know that the visitations of God are varied. And 
the Bible says, in a still small voice, the Lord spoke. May God visit you. May the Holy Spirit arrest the things of your heart. Break them and make them burn. That the fire of God, the power of God, will descend upon your life. That in Jesus' name, you shall know for sure that the visitation power of God is available. The set time has come for divine communication. The set time has come for divine visitation. The set time has come number three. In Genesis 21 and verse 19, the Bible says, Hagar is moving out of the house with Ishmael. And as they come into the wilderness, they run out of water. And so Hagar placed the young boy at a distance that he might not see the death of the boy. And while the little boy is crying, the Bible says, and God heard the voice of the lad. God hears the voice of children. Amen. Children has what we call unspoken request. And parents will do well to give them closer attention. But then while the little one was crying and God was hearing, the Bible says in Genesis um, chapter 21 verse 19, that and the Lord opened the eyes of Hagar. And immediately she saw a well of water. The sad time has come for somebody here today to experience divine revelation. May God open your eyes that you will see. Now, Pastor, what kind of eyes are you talking about? I'm not talking about these eyes that you are looking at me. In 2 Kings chapter 6, the Syrian king is waging war against the people of God. And whatever he plans in his chamber is released to the prophet Elisha in his bedroom by God. And so the king is so furious and he felt that there is a spy within his camp. But then somebody who knew the workings of God said, Oh king, whatever you plan in the closet, God reveals it to the prophet. So the king is now furious and he sets people to go and look for the prophet of God. When they got close to Elijah, the servant of Elisha goes out in the morning and he sees a host of an army that have encircled the whole city. The boy comes and says, oh my lord, what do we do? What a big army. Elisha looks at the young guy and he says, hey guy, listen to me. You have eyes, but you don't have eyes. You only see things in no wood. Are you hearing me? Elisha said to the young prophet, he said, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. The young prophet said, man of God, what are you talking about? I went out. I saw the thousands of the army with their chariots and their horses. Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes. That he may see. And instantly the power of God opened the eyes of the young guy in the realm of the spirit. And he saw the host of heaven. Army versus army. But you know the difference? With his physical eyes, he saw the enemy's army with their horses and their chariots. But when his eyes was opened in response to the prayer of Elisha, the Bible says he saw the heavenly chariots, the horses, and chariots of fire. May God open your eyes. The set time has come for divine revelation. Where you don't operate by the natural eye, but God opens your understanding in the realm of the spirit 
for you to see things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Many of us are walking with eyes but have no eyes. The psalmist prayed, Open thou my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. Many times when you pick the Bible, the same New King James Bible that this man is reading, he sees things that you don't see. I'm preaching in a church. Then the pastor, when I finished, he got up and he said, but, but after when you are preaching, it seems your Bible is different from our Bible. <laughs> my Bible is not different. But the point is that I have made it my policy that any time I pick the Bible, I pray that prayer of the psalmist. Lord, open my eyes that I might see. The set time has come. For the church to see things the way God sees it. Sometimes the things we are doing and we call the church before God is useless. Sometimes the things we call evangelism before God it is entertainment. Let him open our eyes that we can see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in the divine revelation concept, God opening your eyes. He must open your heart too. When the apostle Paul came to Philippi, the Bible says there were women that used to gather by a riverside to have Bible study and prayer meeting. But their hearts were closed. The Bible says, and the Lord opened the heart of Lydia and she believed the things that Paul spoke. May God open your heart. To believe in the revelations of Jesus Christ in the word. Hallelujah. Because he's a God who opens. The set time has come. I've given you three, right? Number four. In Genesis 22 verse 1 to 3. We all know that story. Abraham has been waiting for over 25 years. And eventually... God visits them with Isaac. They are so happy. They are enjoying life. They've had a big party for him. Which has even become a subject of contention in the house. Then the set time came. When God moved. Said Abraham. He said yes Lord. Take your son. Your only son. Whom you love. And go and offer him as a burnt offering for me. On Mount Moriah. The set time has come for somebody in this building. Not only to experience divine communication. Not only to experience uh, divine visitation. Not only to experience divine revelation. But a set time has come for some of us to experience divine examination and testing. You see the thing about God is that. When your time has come and you are enjoying revelation. This man's time has come. And he's going through examination. But when you're enjoying the revelation, don't just sleep. Because it's a God who changes the times and the seasons. So next year, he will shift. When he's going through revelation, you'll be going through examination. Because it's a God who changes times and seasons. And many of us have not come to understand that. That is why there's so much problem, especially in Christian marriages. I want to take some few minutes and say some things here. You see, sometimes the husband 
is in a season of testing. When the wife is in a season of revelation and blessing. And because they have no understanding to the workings of God. They view themselves as enemies. Sometimes a man is in a season of spirituality. Where every minute he wants to be in church. And the woman is a season of carnality. Every minute he wants to watch television. You let me show you something that will help you. You know Daniel. You know Shadrach. Mezak. Abednego. These were young boys at the age of 15, 17. All of them came from noble homes. All of them came from Jewish heritage. All of them were victims of Babylonian captivity. When they were in Babylon, all of them were trained at King's College. Three years. All of them had the same privileges. Are you hearing me? When they were in the college, all of them were gifted by God with wisdom. Daniel 1.17 When they finished the three years, all of them, the friends, they were all examined and interviewed by the king. When they finished, the king promoted all of them. Now we go to chapter 2 of Daniel. Where the king gets a dream and had no interpretation. And he's so much filled with anger and rage that he wants to slaughter people because he has forgotten his dream. One of the most useless persons I've ever met in life. <laughs> and whilst he's making plans, the news gets to Daniel and his friends. So they sought permission and went to God in prayer. And in the night, God revealed the answer to them. So all these boys had access to God's interpretation. Then, once they gave the message, the king promoted them again. You see, promotion will come. But in chapter 3, I'm trying to give you some lesson here. All these boys were enjoying things together. In chapter 3, the king makes a law that if you don't bow to his idol, you're going to be put into the furnace of fire. You remember that? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say to the king, we have nothing to answer you. We've settled the matter. The God whom we serve has the ability, the capacity to deliver us. But if even in the economy of heaven, God has designed that through the fire we dare to glorify him, we will not The king is now angry. More than ever. They took these three boys. And pushed them into the fire. When Shadrach, Mezak, and Abednego were enduring the fire. Daniel was seated at the king's gate. Enjoying food. Are you getting the picture? But you go to chapter 6. This time Daniel is placed in the lion's den. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are governors in the provinces. He is the God that changes times and seasons. So as I'm speaking, you may be going through your furnace of fire. While somebody is enjoying at the king's palace. But it shall not be forever. The set time has come. The set time has come. And listen to me. Whether you go through the lion's den. Or this man goes through the furnace of fire. You will eventually all have a heavenly visitor. Is somebody hearing me? 
While they were in the fire, there was a fourth man who looks like the son of God. Jesus. Hallelujah. When he was in the lion's den, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. God will ultimately visit you. We take authority over every satanic power. We bind every spirit and principality. Any power that demoralizes your life. In the name of Jesus. By the authority and the power of the blood. We set you loose. In Jesus name. The set time has come. For you to experience divine examination. And testing. Joseph was tested. Job was tested. Abraham was tested. The disciples were tested. But eventually, God came through for them. Where are you today? You know, some of you, because you lack understanding of God's workings, when your brothers and your sisters are going through some divine heat and it is not your turn you behave as if they are the most worst sinners on the globe but I speak on the authority of the word your time will come my time will come hallelujah the good news is that the set time has come Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Then there is the set time of divine provision. Genesis 22, verse 8 and 14. Abraham wows his offering Isaac. God knows his heart. And the boy says to his father, Daddy, I see the fire. I see the wood. I've seen the cutlass that you are holding. Where is the lamp? Abraham said, the Lord will provide. Whilst he picked the cutlass going to handle the boy, heaven spoke. Abraham do the child no harm. For now I know that you fear God. God knows you whether you fear him or not. God knows. And then Abraham turned. And a ram was caught in the bush. And he said, the Lord has provided. You see, there are some of you. This is your season of divine provision. The set time has come for God to supernaturally, miraculously provide for you. His provision will have no human explanation. Are you hearing me? The way he's going to do it is beyond you, is beyond me. That's what makes him God. He's in a class of his own. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But you must position yourself to know that your set time for divine provision has come. Amen. Hallelujah. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help me. Let me give you two more and then we'll pray. In Genesis chapter 26, Verse 19 to 22 is about Isaac. He's been in the land of Gerah where God stipulated that he should stay there and he'll bless him. And so he lives in this land and he sows and in that same year the Bible says he reaps a hundredfold. And the man is blessed by God. Hallelujah. And he's prospering and continues to prosper. God shows the degree of the prosperity of this man. But sometimes whilst you are praying for God to prosper you, you must also pray for the grace to endure persecution. On the basis of your prosperity. The Bible says 
the Philistines envied him. You think your only problem is that you have to have all nights and be blessed. When you are blessed, you have another problem. The people around you, they become envious of you. That's another issue. Maybe you and the Prime Minister of Britain will have to sort it out. So now, they move to go and dig a well. His servants. When they will dig the well, the Philistines will come and put sand in and stop them. They will move another place. They will dig the well. They will come and fill it with sand. Three times. Then the fourth time. They dug a well. And the Philistines could not come. And so Isaac said. Now the Lord. Has made room for me. The set time has come for divine allowance. Because there are many of us. We turn left. We are locked. You go to the back. You can't move. Forward, you are hitting the wall. You are actually what the psalmist called perplexity. You are bound. No movement. But the set time has come. For God to grant you divine allowance. God must make room for you. God must make room for me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For the enemy to know. Who is in charge? The set time has come for divine allowance. The Lord must make room for you. Where you work. He must make room for you. Because some of you, you become prisoners even in your working environment. Some of you can say your faith in Christ. You can't tell somebody that Jesus loves you. When the greatest name on the face of the earth is the name Jesus. You need divine allowance. Heaven must make room for you. There must be an opening. So that you can serve your God. Oh hallelujah. I say hallelujah. The set time has come for some of you to have divine direction. Not knowing where you are going in life. It takes away the happiness and joy. But listen to this final one which will help you. In Genesis chapter 20. Verse 2 all the way to verse number 7. It's a story about Abimelech. Who goes in for Abraham's, uh, uh, he goes in for Abraham's wife, Sarah. Because Abraham had already declared that Sarah is my sister. We come from Bristol. She's my sister. If it's your sister, then everybody has a right. So Abimelech goes for Sarah. And then in the night, God appears to him. And the Lord said, hey, you are a dead man. Only heaven knows dead men who are listening to me today. Because you are in relationship with somebody, with somebody's wife. You are always in the church. But the woman you are having an affair is somebody's wife. The man you are having an affair is somebody's husband. Legally married, sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Witnesses were at the wedding. God calls you a dead man. If you're a woman, dead woman. And he said to the king, the woman you have is somebody's wife. Restore. Quick, quick, quick. Then the king is now in some conversation with God. Beautiful. 
He said, by God, you know, I did this in the innocence of my heart. Because the man himself told me that that's the sister. And I could hear God telling him, that one is not written. If it is his sister, are you not satisfied with your own wife? <laughs> you are too greedy. And then, God said to him, I know that you did this in the innocence of your heart. But I restrain you that you should not sin against me. The same time has come for divine confrontation and restraint. There are some of us who are involved in wicked acts, in sinful acts, all in the name of Christianity. And the time has come for heaven to confront us. To tell us boldly the things we are doing. And for us to repent and trust in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. The blood never loses its power. But there must be that confrontation. Sometimes you come to all kinds of meetings. Especially it's TBC where God has so blessed you of all the preachers in the world coming here. Because your pastor and the team, lovely people, sincere men of God, and they come and they speak their heart out to you. Some of you, those with the gift inside, issued will come, lay hands and pa 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 pa. You're all on the floor. And you get up and you are still sleeping with a girl. The set time has come for divine confrontation. But then beyond the confrontation. There are some of us, the set time has come for divine restraint. Amen. You see, many of you, if it is not the restraining hand of God, many of us, including me, if it's not the restraining hand of God, the mess we will have caused. You thought it was your own spiritual strength that when you went to that woman's house in the night, and there was a heavy snow that you could not go home. And that room you went was one room. One bed. Where will you sleep? Where will I sleep? But you found that there was a mighty hand. An invisible hand. That held you. And held the woman. That in that two, three hours. Your holiness was like Mount Moria. You were at the peak. And then when you came out and you did not sin. You're giving testimonies as if by your power. Abimelech said, you know by my innocence. God said, I know by your innocence, but I also restrain you. If it is not for divine restraint, many of us, it does not matter the anointing and the tongues you speak. The amount of lies you will be lying. But sometimes God makes sure that you are in a place where the question they will ask you when you answer all your holiness is right. And so God supernaturally makes sure that they don't ask you that question. Uh, is somebody here with me? You are behaving as if you are angels that are in the church. If it is not the Lord that is on my side, there are places the lies I will have said. But God supernaturally restrained. That questions were not asked. So you can go free. Oh somebody say hallelujah. What am I saying because of our time? 
beloved, listen. The set time has come. The set time has come for God to bless you. The set time has come for you to be revived in your passion for lost souls. Souls are dying. Millions are without Christ. But Jesus died for the redemption of humanity. And I pray that this will be a set time for somebody here to be activated in your spirit by the power of the Holy Ghost and begin to preach and to share the gospel of Christ in the name of Jesus. The set time has come for Trinity to be close to supernatural power. The set time has come for young girls and young boys to receive the call of God. The set time has come. Today people are becoming pastors when they are going on retirement. Yeah. When they do all the things in the world and then at the age of 65 they will come and say, Pastor, the Lord is calling me. When Daniel and Timothy and others responding at the age of 17. You, you did not respond all because of human social security. If God can't take care of you, no social security in your system can take care of you. Are you hearing me? If God cannot take care of you, if he can't take care of me, no amount of the social security system in the land will be able to take care of you. In some countries even they have collapsed it. People work for years and some politicians have taken 15 minutes to consume it. I recommend Jesus to you. He will not fail you. Hallelujah. The psalmist says, I know your name is enduring. You will arise and favor Zion. For the set time has come. The set time for God to favor you is today. I pray for you. That you begin to take some time off your busy schedule. And in the closer hear the voice of your father. Let him guide and direct you. Know his ways and his workings. And pray by his will. If you are sick, the set time for your healing has come. He sent for his word to heal. And so I command in the name of Jesus. Every disease in your body. Every weakness. Every infirmity. Every hypertension. Every satanic power that holds your womb. I speak by the authority of the word of God. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. The set time for your healing has come. The set time for your promotion has come. You've worked for far too long. And the hour has come for God to promote you, to honor you. Bow down your heads, let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and we honor you. We bless you for the grace to be alive today. And we thank you for the opportunity to even hear the preaching of your word. Thank you, Lord, that you care for your own. That you are God who appraised with divine calendar. And whilst we are being represented here from various backgrounds with various challenges of life, Father, you know how to meet every need. I pray for my brothers and my sisters here today that the blood of Christ will wash us from every sin. Forgive us of our unbelief and lifestyle of out in your word. And now we pray that whatever an individual is going through, may the authority and the power of God manifest your glory. Favor your people, Lord. Favor your people, Lord. And I pray that in favoring us, we will also be responsible believers. Taking the gospel to those who have never heard it. Living a life that is pleasing to you. Father, you know somebody that is in pain. You know someone that is sharing some tears in the midnight hour. 
No man can understand our pain except Jesus Christ. Father, touch that heart. Touch that life. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause his countenance to shine on you. May the Lord place his name over your life. May the Lord give you peace. May the Lord cause you to experience all the fullness of Christ. We thank you, Father. We thank you. As a church, the set time has come to multiply this church. To expand this church. To enlarge the borders of this church, Trinity Baptist. And so in the name of Jesus, Father, raise a new generation of preachers. Raise a new generation of pastors and evangelists. Raise apostles and prophets and teachers of the word. Raise musicians and worship leaders, oh God. Raise them in this church in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we honor you. For answered prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.